We know what you've come for. And now we're going to give it to you. You're listening to the No Such Thing podcast. Okay, folks, so um, welcome back to the um, No Such Thing podcast, and tonight we have Rose again. This is part two, and we've been talking a lot, and we um, we had to cut it short because of her little gremlin, um, i.e. her li- little baby, her newborn, wouldn't stop crying and ruined the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I was so offended, you know, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, she's going to drop some information on um, Skinwalkers, not Skywalker, that's Star Wars. That's my email address, skywalker711 at yahoo.com. But yeah, it was a big Star Wars nerd until um, Disney took it over. I mean, the last movie was good. And, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what the? Boba Fett. The Boba Fett series was great. The Mandalorian. That was a quality series. But anyway, Rose is coming back on here tonight, and she's going to be um, elaborating on some more of her um, encounters, and she's going to be talking about the Skinwalker, which a lot of people with Native American with Native American heritage will not mention because they believe... I, I know different tribes have different beliefs, and forgive my ignorance, but... They believe that if you speak of it, it will become, you know, somehow real. I think we did the same thing back in Ireland. You know, you, there's things you don't speak of because it makes it, it makes it uh, materialize or it makes it more real in the real world. I'm not sure, but um, Rose and I have had a hell of a time trying to get together and trying to make everything work because, like I say, she is a beautiful newborn and. You know, of course, she's besotted and, you know, well, she's very busy and and her husband can sometimes step in and let Rose do these interviews. And she's a sweetheart. She's a southerner and I love southerners. So um, I hope you enjoy the show. I don't know what we're going to be talking about. Well, I just told you what we're going to be talking about, but it might veer off topic. I don't know. We're going to try for an hour. I think the last one went for just over an hour. But um, she um, she's kind of a, you know, she has premonitions and stuff like that. She saw what I think was a juvenile Bigfoot. So that should be fun because the Bigfoot thing always fascinates me. And, yeah, it should be fun. And enjoy the show, folks. Thank you. Hello. Wow, you're quick. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Man, you Southerners are always on the ball. Like as soon as I call any Southerner that I've interviewed on this um, on this platform, you just pick up right away. It's like you're, you know, you don't you don't mess around. Yeah, military brat. Oh, are you? Are, were you in the military? No, my dad was in the army. I'm a mil- I was a, uh, I was born on the base of Fort Campbell in Tennessee, on the um, Fort Campbell's like on the Kentucky side, but part of their base is also on Tennessee side, and I was born on the Tennessee side. Yeah, that's that's my wife's from Kentucky. She actually just took a road trip, and she was down there, and um, she brought the kids with her and saw her her kin in uh, uh, Frankfurt. Oh wow! But but it's been a while she- since I've been there. Yeah, but she grew up on the edge of the um, Daniel Boone Forest, and her cousin had a pretty intense encounter when his dirt bike broke broke down in the middle of the the forest, and he was um, escorted out. It, it, that's a polite way to put it, in um, by a Bigfoot, and he didn't know what it was until he got to the the, the tree line, and he was running to his grandma's house, and he turned around and saw this. Do you ever see the white 
um, Kentucky or the white Pennsylvania Bigfoot? No, I have not. I have, um, I've had, um, since I've been on that, uh, Bigfoot group and a few others, they have always talked about the Bigfoot out in Kentucky. And it's funny because going off subject for a sec, uh, off subject for a second, I hear about the Bigfoot in Kentucky and all around Tennessee, but I never hear people from Tennessee ever talk about their experience with Bigfoot. And if you do, it's like bare minimal. Well, apparently people in the South don't really want to, but apparently the Smoky Mountains are awash with Bigfoot activity. That's where Scott Carpenter's from. I was telling you about the last time. He um, has a whole channel and he, you know, goes out into the woods and he wears the, um, the, the GoPro on his back and stuff. And I think sometimes he stretches it a bit, you know, he, he, yeah. You know, that, that pareidolia stuff, is that how you pronounce it? I'm not really for sure. I, I think that's how you pronounce it, but I think he sees things that aren't there. No, I can't I can't really, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah. But he, um, <clears throat> now I have a friend in Oklahoma, and I'm going down to see him in um, October. I've already got my flight booked. And he has bona fide Bigfoot activity on his property he he lives in southeast oklahoma and oh wow he's at 25 different firearms <laughs> and and i'm <laughs> and, and, and trying try to tell us to my european friends and they're like i'm like but he has hogs like they, they come up to his property hogs like 500 pound hogs and he's he's got an ar-15 with a sniper scope how else are you going to take out a hog are you going to like wait until it gets like five feet of you no, you, you got to take it out and at a distance. So he's well armed, but what what he doesn't do is shoot at the Bigfoots. Right, right. No, I get that because we were going to buy a property down in Georgia uh, a couple years ago. Before um, is right when we got married. It was 2017, and that area where we were going to buy the house, buy the property, and everything, mm-hmm. they had so many hogs down there. So we would have had to get. Um, guns and also had to set up traps if we were going to actually live there because it was like really infested with hogs and i'm not talking about like miss piggy i'm talking about hogs you know <laughs> well, well when pigs when actual domesticated pigs go out into the wild it takes like three months until they turn into like satan you know yeah. they, they quickly evolve back to what they used to be which is a strange phenomena and he i mean people are, are like um, what's a crime rate like um, in southeast Oklahoma? Zero, <laughs> because <laughs> you don't break into people's property, you don't um, rob a store, and all that stuff. So Mark, um, who is off the Livewire channel, I don't know if you've checked it out yet, he has so much evidence, and some of it is blurry and stuff, but you, I mean, it's very hard to get a clear shot, but he has so much um, audio and... I mean, there's what there is one actual video that he posts, and you can see two juvenile bo- Bigfoots looking over the um, over you know the above ground pool, and their heads are going up and down, and they're watching his kids. You can see it. It's oh like, wow! Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that reminds me, I just found our EVP, um, the recording that we had of the EVP that we caught on our property. Oh really? And um, mm-hmm. And I meant to uh, have it ready, so when you called, I would be able to play some of it. But um, <laughs> yeah, today's been a—it's been a fun day. I'll put it that way. But anyways, and um, a lot of people don't realize this. There's two things about the crypto that stands out, and that's one: people complain about the pictures always being blurry and everything. There's a reason for that. A lot of people don't realize that these animals that they, you know, that we talk about, Bigfoot, Dogman the whole shebang they're not just in a physical form they're also supernatural form that's why a lot of times you can't always find these creatures and another thing is um the evidence that the evp that i have from um, our property it affected all the animals and we lived at that time four acres and just one acre affected every single animal on that property Within a matter of minutes. In I what, mean, one minute. Oh, go in, ahead. In what way? Okay, like, for instance, um, 
when we were going outside, animals, you know, the dogs were barking. Um, the one dog that we have, her name is Roxy. You know, I felt like something was wrong, and she kept barking, but she wouldn't bark in one single direction. Normally, if there's like a predator or a person, they stay focused in one area, and they'll just bark. She was moving around, barking in every single place in uh, her area. And um, then the the chickens, because we had a lot of chickens at that time, they were, you know, like chickens do, they pack and everything. Then all of a sudden, they just stopped. They started gathering <coughs> together like there was a predator nearby. Really? And they make like mm-hmm, they make these noises to let you know that hey, there there's something nearby. And then um, it got all of a sudden just complete quiet. And I wish I had the tape. And when I get the chance, I'll let you hear it one day. Um, it just got completely silent all at once. And then all you heard, all you can hear was the frogs. And then things started like adding up, adding up. And then on part of the EVP, we actually got tribal music in the background. Like something was like doing like, um, like whistle, like they would do, like when they were like communicating with each other. And then it just goes completely silent, like nothing even happened. Really? And we found out later there were mounds on that property. We thought it was just hills, you know, because the way the land is set up and everything. No, we actually have trees that were growing through those mounds. And it you wouldn't notice unless you were looking for them. And there were three of them. And we did our homework. And we had um, the property that we were living on um, had a lot of dry creek beds, which also signified that there was also some tribes that were nearby on that property, if not on that property. And uh, we were not that far from Trail of Tears, which most people already know what the Trail of Tears were. And then not too far from the house, we had uh, Shiloh Park. And then about 30 minutes from our house was Pinson Mounds, which they're known to have every single Native American tribe that go from, I want to say from Washington State all the way down to uh, Florida. And they'll come through, and one of their stops that they make is in, in Pinson Mounds. And Pinson Mounds has a lot of Native American mounds and everything. And we got to see what the aerial view, uh, view of the mounds were and everything. And they're mm. supposed to be, like, one thing that we learned is that every tribe, their mounds, they're fixated on a animal. And it's kind of funny because when we took uh, had that picture of that animal on our um, trail cam, Everybody sees something differently, and that's why I was always saying, like, with the crypto, you can never tell. They don't like their picture taken, and that's why you get a lot of blurry images. And if you're lucky enough to get a clear image, you're like one maybe out of a hundred that could get a clear image. The rest of them are going to be blurry. They're going to be distorted. Now, you're saying MONDS, as in M-O-U-N-D-S, right? Do what? You're saying MONDS, as in, like, little hills, right? These are well. The ones on our property were pretty good sized mounds. The ones in Pinson Mounds are huge. As a matter of fact, the one in Shiloh, Tennessee, they actually have the stairs going up where you can actually climb. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's in Pinson Mounds. They got one that's like really, really tall. I mean, it is huge. It, it's like the size of a house, if not bigger. You can actually climb up there. And the same thing with the one in uh, Shiloh. They have several mounds in there too. Yeah, we have in Ireland we have like mounds all over the place, and then they've they've discovered that they're burial mounds for the the old um, the kings. Now, they call them kings, but they're just like clan leaders, and there was like thousands of clans in the country. But yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the last time we left off, we had little gremlin in the background, and and she he was screaming. <laughs> Yeah, he was teething, and then he stopped, and then he's starting to teeth again. But luckily, we got all the stuff that we needed, so in case he starts crying, he's taken care of. So the husband's there taking care of him? Oh, yeah. Um, hubby is watching a movie, getting ready to take a nap, and uh, Baby is passed out. What movie is he watching? Oh, he's watching Chopped. Chopped? Never heard of it. It's not a movie. It's like a TV show. It's you know, different chefs from all over the world, they'll compete and they get these basket items and then they'll, um, how do you say, um, they have to make a meal out of it. 
Oh, you know what I watched last night was um, The Outpost. Have you ever heard of that? No. It's about, um, it's a true story, actually. I read the book years ago. It's about <clears throat> this, um, I guess, FOB, Forward op Operating Base in Afghanistan, and they put it uh -huh. right in the middle of a mountain range. So it's right at the bottom, and they were getting attacked daily, and they were trying to, um, you know, appease the elders to stop their you know, um, young Taliban people from, you know, attacking. But then they got this new leader and he wasn't so good at negotiation. So at the end of the day, excuse me, he, he um, the Taliban, there was like 200 of them and they came in force and they, they um, attacked the, uh, the base. And it's a very intense movie. You should, it's 1919. You should, or sorry, 2019. You should check it out. It's called um, The Outpost. And it, it's available for rip if you just want to rip it. <laughs> That's what I... I haven't, paid for, I haven't <laughs> paid for a movie or a CD for my whole life. <laughs> so let's... Yeah, um, no, we have like... So I got so many military movies. It's not even funny. My, like I said, my dad was in the military for 15 plus years. And um, I think, uh, you know, like I said, and we have... a a few good uh, military movies. Some of them are based on true stories. Some of them are about situations that have happened. Um, I know, uh, like on Paramount, I'm at Paramount, Paranormal Witness, um, there's a few uh, military stories that I enjoy listening and watching and stuff like that um, that uh, went over what, you know, the paranormal activity that was going on in the, in the certain places where they were um, stationed at and everything. And in my mother's country, um, y'all think the Bigfoot here in the States are bad. Y'all should see the stuff that goes in Central America. <laughs> really? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we can. I don't care. Um, they're not really Bigfoot. I don't know. I guess the best way to explain them, it would be, um, there's, if you ever read the stories of Louisiana and the Bayou, they have some of the weirdest creatures and a lot of them, because of the bayou, because of the swamps and everything, you, you don't, unless you know where you're going, you're going to get lost. And they got these creatures that stand about three to four feet tall. And if you go out towards the bayou um, at night, you can hear like little chattering. And what they do is they lure their victims out into the swamp and they kill them. A three and or, I don't know. A three or four huh? foot, a three or four foot foot creature can kill a person well they don't work by themselves they'll oh, okay. they might start out luring by themselves I mean, you know maybe one but that one might be about 15 more that's what makes them so dangerous is that they're like a little group they and they work together you know and in my mother's country i don't know the name of them she's told me that before but what, what's, your similar to what, what, what's your mother's country fatima fatima yeah, Panama. Oh, it's Panama. It's Colombia. Oh, so, yeah. so you're, you're um, half... Uh, Spanish. S Spanish. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, in her country, she's actually had her... She had two different brothers uh, to had encounter with these same type of creatures that you would find in the bayou. And one of them actually chased down her eldest brother and... Um, in on in their home in their family home, and he liked to nearly gotten killed by these creatures, and he died a couple of years later. Something with the liver, and um, her youngest brother, he's also passed away. Um, they were always tempting him to follow him, uh, follow them, and he almost did. And if he had, he probably would never been found. And all they do is lure their victims out to, and my mother's case in her country would be the jungle, but here in the States would be um, the bayou. And also traced it back to where, um, like in Ireland, y'all have um, leprechauns. And they're almost similar to what, you know, what the le uh, leprechaun uh, folklore. Well, do you know where I think the leprechaun folklore comes from? In, in between, between the... The, the months of uh, September and November, we have magic mushrooms growing everywhere. And people, and I think that 
well, we used to eat them like, yeah, as teenagers. And I think that way back in the day, people probably, you know, ate them like hell yeah. and probably saw stuff. That, <laughs> that's what I think. Well, I don't know. I mean, even in um, Europe, there's different cases and each country, each legend, some might be the leprechaun, other they uh, call them elves. Um, I want to say in Sweden, there's something else. Here in the States, they're, uh, they're almost identical to what they have in Europe under different names and stuff like that. And then Central America, I mean, it's like Bigfoot story. You have so many sightings, so many folklore in different parts of the world that there's got to be some truth in there. Yeah, I know. There's like how many, I think we have, I mean, estimated 10,000 sightings of um, the same creature in North America. And at some point you've got to be like, well, you know, they can't all be lying or misidentifying a creature. There's there's definitely something out there. And we, we, we had the, the same thing with, back home we had banshees. Uh-huh. And when 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 you heard a banshee, um, it meant that someone in your family would die. But if you saw a banshee, um, you would die. And I don't know where that comes from, but there's a lot of folklore, and I, I don't think it comes from nowhere. I don't know. I mean, so. Well, the what the Greeks would call them sirens. Sirens, right? Yeah. That's right. They're they're different. It's it's almost like God. It's like we all have this um, different interpretation of God all around the world, and the atheists say, "Well, you have all these different gods, and um, they all look different." And but it, that's just a cultural thing. I think that we're all just trying to get the grips with the fact that there's a higher power, and we interpret them differently because of our culture. I think it's just a, a, a human way of trying to, you know, interpret the divine, right? I'm going to have to agree to disagree on that one. I mean, it's it just, um, to me, that's a really touchy subject because I've seen so many people uh, get into this discuss, discussion of God or if there's one God or two, two goddesses or goddesses and stuff like that, and I've seen so many people... Um, in their friendship, in their, you know, communications and stuff like that. And, you know, I believe what the Jewish believes to a degree. Um, you know, I, you know, I read my King James Version Bible and everything. And ultimately, you know, I always believe that people are going to have a choice. You're either going to believe or you don't, you know. And if you believe something else, you know, awesome, because... You know, at least um, you're saying that there is something, and you're not just saying that we are going to die and go nowhere because there's too much evidence to show that when you die, you don't just die. You do, you know, there is another place, you know. And um, I always, you know, it's like skeptics. I love skeptics because, you know, they have in their mind, in their, um, in their views, that there's no such thing as paranormal, there's no such thing as crypto, that they're going to be able to feel it, touch it, you know, so on and so forth, before they even believe. And they're so diehard that even when you show them pictures, even if you show them the evidence, they want to debunk it to there's nothing left. So when they actually go on a paranormal investigation, when they actually go on a, um, a uh, how do you say, like, into the woods for themselves and they actually have a bad experience they no longer have that stone where it's you know they can say that there's nothing because there is something you know it's just um as you say culture cult, cultural others may say it'd be something else you know i guess it just depends on that person themselves you know what a person's willing to believe and what a person's willing not to believe you know well well, well somebody said um his name was Gavin McInnes. He was like, there are, God left so many clues around, and he let, he, he put in so many, um, like say, um, what's the name for it? If you have sex with your sister, 
you'll have a you know a defective child and these kind of things there, there's other examples i can't really remember but when i was in greece i was um i was standing there and oh it's a long story i'm going to try to make it short <laughs> but i was standing there and i'd thrown all my stuff down this canyon onto a beach and i was going to go down to the beach and swim into the it was quite a quite a ways and then when i got down there i was like oh shit i can't swim in there it's too far and the waves are too high so we called for help and i was standing waiting for someone to come and help me get my stuff back and i heard his laughter and this is like in santorini in greece and I heard this laughter echo off all of the canyons that I was in. And it was something like, a, um, what do you call that movie? Um, what do you call that movie? Uh, Clash of the Titans. And yeah. it was like this roaring laughter that seemed to come from the heavens. And I can, I, I can never explain it to, that day, to this day. And it was just so, and was, there was no one around. And there was no one that could have made that volume of uh, laughter. It, it was unless they had like a megaphone or like some kind of a sound system, but I, I I can still never explain that. You know, it's so strange. Yeah. But anyway, so where we left off the last time, we were talking about your paranormal experiences, and you you've had many. Yeah, <laughs> that's an understatement. But yeah, I've had many paranormal paranormal ex, um, experiences. Now your whole life has been marred by these. You you've you've had trouble with it because it's it's too in your face it's like um you've got kind of a gift and you just do you want this gift or would you rather just not know if you had asked me that question about 15 years ago i would say i don't want it now i i view it as as a gift and not just a curse um the reason 15 years ago is because i actually left my home state which was you know tennessee to New York, I didn't want. Um, Where are you living now? Anything. To, I live in Tennessee now, but at the time, uh, well, it hasn't been 15 years ago, but it's been a while. But um, I guess it has been 15. Oh my gosh, I've gotten older. <laughs> Me too. Um, but I, I, I had left to go to New York um, for a little while because I wanted to get away from everything. I wanted a fresh start. Um, I've had. Um, growing up, you know, I would always see a dark shadow and everything else. If it wasn't a dark shadow, it would be, you know, somebody that I thought was alive was not alive. Um, when I was in school, like in high school, um, just talking to somebody and, you know, there was no reason for, um, for this to happen. Like, um, my senior year, which was in 2002, I was going to graduate from high school. You're so young. And yeah, I was, I was I had just turned 18 and I had gotten a job as a dishwasher at um, one of the I don't know if you ever heard of the place it's in Pickwick's uh, Landing State Park and they have a restaurant there and um, I had gotten a job there um, as a dishwasher at the restaurant part and I had worked at a graveyard shift I had to go to school I had to be at school at like six o'clock in the morning so I decided to cat nap get to school about five five thirty and just do my homework because I didn't get to do it the night before. So it's about 5.30, 5.45 at the school. The only people there were the um, the janitors, and they had let me in, and they were on the other side of the building. Um, our high school was rebuilt back in 1999. They were in the process. I was a freshman, and um, they were remodeling the school and everything. And the, where I was at, it was an add-on. And um, I was doing my homework and everything, and right above me, doorknob was moving. And it's not like the regular doorknob. It's like the one with a handle where you have to actually put pressure on the handle for it to move. And um, I'm like, okay, I'm by myself. Janitors are down there. Maybe one of them is playing a prank on me because I'm here by myself, you know. I get up, look in the room. It's completely dark in there. There's nobody in there. The doorknob, the handle is locked there's nobody in at all nobody there so i sit back down start doing my homework about five minutes later the handle did it again and again i look there's nothing i'm like okay maybe i'm tired maybe you know i'm I'm just hearing things you know maybe it's something you know 
but two minutes later, the doorknob, the door handle again moved above me, and right across from me, there was another room, and I know for a fact there is nobody in that room, and it was locked, and it was secured, and the handle was moving by itself, and they were moving not exactly at the same um, uh, time, but the timing was too close for it to be human um you know, because if you, you know, when you move something, there's always like a little space and stuff like that. No, mm-hmm. the handles were moving almost identical, but not at the same time. And then a minute later, the other handle from down the hall was starting to move. So within a span of 10 minutes, the whole hall room of door handles were moving by themselves. And I know for a fact there was nobody in that hallway because, like I said, at that hour, teachers don't normally get there till seven, seven thirty. Janitors were down in the in the, um, the gym area, and I'm in the hallway by myself. It did not stop till about six thirty, six forty five, when other students were coming in, and I was like looking at them. My friends were like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like, "You wouldn't believe me if I told you," and I told them that, and I ended up getting labeled as a freak and stuff like that. I'm like, "Never again will I tell anybody anything," and um. You know, I've had um, experiences with, you know, I, I said before what happened with my sister. If I had went back home, um, I would have gotten killed. Um, you know, going to New York, I just wanted to forget everything that happened. And um, I was by myself in the new apartment and everything. And um, I thought when I left, I left everything behind. And uh, I looked up and saw the black shadow again. So, um I knew then that no matter where I go, it's always going to follow kind of thing. And um, I think it was after my wreck, um, everything had stopped. Um, I was under a lot of medications for the nerve damage and everything. And um, when I started getting off the medication, things hit like amplified. So everything that I used to be able to see has been amplified 10 times more so it's more intense now um whereas before if i saw somebody that was passed away you know there was some hint that they were not alive you know and i look back at that and i realize that now but i was in lowe's this happened a few years ago and um i was in the store and um i looked at this man i thought he was because he was solid form that's never happened to me before i thought it was a real person and he looked up and smiled at me and walked through the window. I mean, walked through the wall. But he was in solid form, like I could literally go up and touch him, and he was able to walk through the wall. What did he look like? He was dark hair, probably about thirty-five, thirty-eight years old, uh, about five foot. I want to say about five foot nine, five foot ten. Um, the hair was brown, but it was more auburn. And it wasn't like a dark auburn. It was like a medium to light auburn. I mean, like if you the sunlight hit it just right, you could see a lot of the red tint. But it was still the brown with the you know the auburn. Um, Caucasian, um, neatly shaved, had on a tan jacket, wolf well, khaki if you want to say it. Um, the shirt, I that part I'm, I'm reddish brown I believe and then pants were like a really light khaki pants and then he just walked through the wall right in front of you right in front of me and what was weird is that I looked around there was nobody else around me so I'm like I had to do a double take because like I said you know I've seen like if I can remember all the experience I've had childhood and up they were always some telltale sign that this person was not alive But a couple of years ago, this man looked just like alive. He was solid form, as solid could be, yet he was able to walk through the wall. And I wasn't on anything. I wasn't on pain medication anymore. I wasn't taking anything. Um, The most I was doing was vaping. And even in my vape, it was just pure vape juice. It wasn't like anything to hallucinate with or anything like that. And... um, now I don't really go to Lowe's by myself anymore. I have to, I'll go with somebody just to make sure that what I see is legit and not something that, you know, you know, um, that did you see that or, or something, you know? And, and, and kind of a way you're lucky 
I, I, I know that sounds like, yeah, right, I'm lucky, but I've never seen something like that. I've, every day for me is just like so damn normal, and it's, it's kind of boring. I, I would love to see something like that that would just clarify that there is some other kind of world or dimension there, and maybe I'm not open. I'll put it this way. If I had a choice to see what I see sometimes or not, yes, I see it as a gift and everything, but I think some people, um, that's why certain people have the gift and certain ones don't. The ones that don't, I mean, to me, in all honesty, everybody has some sort of gift, okay? The hair on your arm might raise when there's something that's around, you know, or you might feel in your gut there's something wrong. Everybody has some sort of gift. But those are their gifts are more intense. There are some people that cannot handle what their brain is processing. Some people have committed suicide because they don't want to see what they're seeing. I guess I guess that's that's the best way to say it. And um, you know, I've been to a few um, paranormal investigations, and the hardest one I think was um, we went on one with this new team, and, and I was on the road and stuff like that checking everything out you know doing my walk and um i saw a little child hit by another vehicle and you know that's hard to watch because who wants to see a child get hit by a vehicle and that was found out that was accurate you know i've seen and talked to people that have committed suicide you know and their families are the ones that's hurting you know, I had a woman that she really did not know what to do. She didn't know anything. And all she did was show me a picture of her loved one. And I went into details that no one else knew. And this was over the phone. This wasn't over in person to person. This was over the phone. And, um, you know, I think that gave her some comfort. And I think those are the hardest cases, seeing uh, children and suicide victims. Well, children are always the hardest. That, that's one thing that I can't really deal with when kids are hurt. So, we um, the photograph that I uploaded onto your, um, you know, the the thumbnail onto your the last episode. You said it was a skinwalker, and it had yes. many faces. And can you tell me the story behind that? Yes. Um this actually a two-part story, so I'm going to try not to go too or be too long-winded. No, go ahead. At least I don't try. care. Yeah. Well, it's just I heard the baby crying, <laughs> so I'm trying to make sure if he doesn't need my help or in case he does. So I'm going to try to go through it but not go through it so fast. Um, I had lived at that house before back in 2008 is when I first lived there. In, my in first Tennessee. Day. Yes. Um, we <clears> noticed <throat> things were going on. But we didn't know for sure. Um, I don't know if I told you this or not. So if I have, I apologize. Um, you know, I had smelled smoke in the house before. It was like nobody in the house sm uh, smoked tobacco from a pipe, you know. And one night I was um, home alone. Things always happen when I'm home alone. Kind I don't know why, but they do. I um, was watching a movie. At that time, I had a Pomeranian. And... Um, I was downstairs, my palm was upstairs, and I heard something run down the stairs and hit my leg. I'm like, really, Taz? Really? Because um, his name was Tasmanian. He was crazy. We thought it was going to be like a little uh, little teddy bear, but he ended up being crazy. He likes to attack feet and stuff like that. I don't know. But anyways, and I, you know, I was trying to pet him and everything, and he wasn't there. I'm like, okay, he probably went back upstairs. Again, I heard something run down the stairs, hit me in my leg. I'm like... This dog is dumb, you know. I, I was just mad. So third time it happened, I reached down, was petting him, like, "What is wrong?" And I happened to look at the stairs, and there's my Pomeranian. How am I petting something furry, but my palm's on the stairs? And I looked down, there's nothing there. So I left the house. I went to my neighbor's for a little bit until my first husband came back home. Um. We had some things that were going on at the house. Um, 
that we didn't understand what was going on, but my then first husband didn't know. He wasn't really into the paranormal or anything like that. And then after about a year or so, our marriage just went down a hill, and we finally just separated. And um, the night before I was supposed to go back on the road, um, I just come back into the house. And, you know, if you ever went hunting, if you ever went into the woods, if you ever had, like, a predator, like, watching you, you know that look. And I stopped at the stair, you know, the the bottom of the stairs. And I looked up. I stopped up in my stairs. I seen this creature. I mean, it was, I, I, the eyes was like, you cannot forget the eyes. And your eyes. They were so, yes. It was all scales. It was like a lizard man. I guess you could, that's the best way. But it didn't move like a human, but it had human fe- features. And it slithered just like, a lizard, you know, would. And I had to look in front of me, then look back, and it was gone. And um, went back on the road, and, um, you know, we were, I was driving the graveyard shift. It was, I always enjoyed driving after midnight because less traffic and everything. And um, I saw a deer. And I'm like, I was going too fast to slow down. I knew that if I had put my brakes on, it would injured everybody, you know, at least if I, you know, collided with it, it would only hurt me, not anybody else. So I was bracing for impact and the deer looked up, but it wasn't a deer. It had the body of a deer, but not the face. It was distorted. It looked, I mean, it was demonic. Okay. Hmm. And, um, uh, vehicle ran right through. Really? And then a week later. Yeah. You didn't hit it. And did not hit it. It just went like the view, the van went through it. So I found an exit or two later. I went and got me some coffee. And at that time, I was smoking cigarettes and I was smoking a cigarette just to get my thoughts together because nobody was going to believe me. No matter what I said, no one was going to say, you know, believe what I just saw. Of course not. And then a week, a week and a half later, we got into an accident and my ex husband, who was my sergeant, um, hit a mule deer. And if anybody knows what a mule deer is, it's not a little deer. It is huge. And it was head on, head on, about 80, 85 miles per hour. And there's 15 people on this van. Two agents, myself and, you know, my ex-husband. What what do you mean? And the rest were all in that. What do you mean agents? Like, at that time, I was an extradition agent. I used to transport inmates across country. Oh, cool. I've been from... Yeah, I was from, I'll, I drove from Maine down to Florida all the way out to California. Oh, um, wow. We went all over. And it was just me and him, and the rest were um, inmates. And uh, nobody else got injured, only me. I was in the hospital for about two, two and a half days. So I came back home. I'm trying to recover. And, um, you know, I, I just started uh, reading some books and stuff like that started getting into demonology because I wanted to find out what was in my home. I wanted to find out what I hit. And that night I had a seizure. It was so bad. They actually had to take me to the ER because it was so bad, uh, which also got me into demonology. I studied demonology for a few years. And um, when I go to help people, if there is a demon, if there really is a legit demon, you know, I was taught and trained how to do deliverance and stuff like that. But going back to the house, um, after my accident, my mother was helping me out. She was diagnosed with breast cancer a year later. And then I finally had to give up my home, had to move back in with my parents. The people that moved in our, the house that I had, um, he, the, the, the man that, um, the father, I guess you could say, he had gotten cancer for no reason. And the same thing that happened to us happened to them. I did my homework. The people that we got the house from, their marriage broke up the same way my marriage broke up. Um, the first couple and the couple after me both had one child. Um, the house that I lived in the first time, there was handprints on the walls. They were too tall to be put there by a child. And I got small hands for an adult, okay? Um, I always had little hands. And um, 
I put my hand over it. It was no bigger than mine, but you could tell it was a child, and uh, it was too tall. It was too high up on the wall to be from a child, and I didn't have children at that time. And um, when we moved back, when I moved there again with my now husband, uh, we had some interesting things that went on in that house. Um, when we first moved in, you know, I told my husband, something doesn't feel right. I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm always being watched. When I went to the house by myself to paint and stuff like that, in the corner of my eye, I always saw movement. So I'm like, okay, let me try to debunk it. Don't try to automatically assume there's something here because it could not be, you know, maybe, you know, um, something else. Like my hair got in my eyes or something. Um, but the more it happened, the more I realized it was not hair. It was not a figment of my imagination, something's going on here. Um, we started hatching our own chickens, um, our baby chicks. Um, the ones I checked that morning, they were all fine. Nothing was wrong. Everything was set up like it's supposed to be. I had chickens for over five years. I know what to look for if they're sick or something. And these were all healthy chicks. I left the room not even 20 minutes. All of them died except for one. That reminds, and saying that, when I was there the first time at the house, I had a baby chick that died. It was literally dead. I mean, it was no reviving it. It was dead. I put it in the woods. 20, 30 minutes later, I heard a baby chick outside. The same baby chick that I had just put out in the woods was with the other chickens. Wow. There is no way... That was possible, and I'm still to this day trying trying to figure out what happened. Was I wrong? Was did I miss miss something? No, it was cold, stiff, the whole sh the whole yards. It was dead. The baby chicks that were all healthy, all of them died except for one, and that's not possible within that time frame. Normally, it takes a few hours or at least a day. You know, um, I kept having dreams that our chickens were going to be slaughtered. Something in my, you know, I was just feeling angry. I was feeling hot. And um, when our neighbor's dogs came into the property, dogs normally, whenever they kill chickens, chickens, the bodies are all over the ground. They're not just laying in one spot. It, they're, they're torn apart. These chickens that were killed were laid in a circle around their pen. A perfect circle. Dogs don't do that. Uh, my husband and I, we decided to put iron uh, fencing around the chickens and stuff like that. And the next day, that's when we caught that image that was on the uh, picture. And that picture's actually been enhanced. Uh, people have said that they've seen a little girl from that picture. Uh, we took the picture uh, and let other people that were that worked with wildlife, they thought they could not figure out what it was. I've shown that picture that without the enhancement, they could have sworn it was like a crow. Others saw an otter. You know, there's no clear definition. But when you enhance a picture, each one you see the face is clearer and clearer and clearer. And like I said before, we don't live too far from Native American territory. Um, and a lot of, and two of those faces are for sure Native American. So you think it was a skimwalker? Yes. Because it doesn't take a true form. Right. Skinwalkers are not always wolf or werewolves. Um, if you look up the if it, um, definition of a skinwalker, you can see different animals. And it's funny because each animal that they thought it was matches the description of a skinwalker. And what's really odd is that Tennessee's not known for skinwalkers. Skinwalkers are more like Navajo. They're not Cherokee. They're not Choctaw. They're not the tribes in Tennessee. And that's the part that throws me off because in here in Tennessee, you don't hear anybody talk about these things. And it kind of annoys me because we have so much going on that it's not even funny. Like from our house, um, there's another area called McNary. It's also another area called Mickey, Tennessee. And not too far from there, you get shark bottoms. And shark bottoms, people have talked about Bigfoot, but they don't make it public. Hmm. So, have you ever seen the video of the, I think it might be Alaska, about the Native American guy, and he's just recording, and he can hear this thing in the, way in the distance, and it's 
it's like laughing like a hyena and it goes on for like 20 minutes have you seen that video no i have not oh it's so um, freaky I'm, well i'll put it this way it's funny because all the videos you're telling me to listen to i'm like why have i not heard of these because i've heard of so many videos i've i've got different stories from different native americans on you know certain subjects and stuff like that i've watched um different videos like on youtube they'll post like these videos that they had not from yesterday or the day before but years ago and stuff like that i think even i don't know if you ever watched a tv show called swamp people um in one episode the girl there's a woman there her dad was one of the first people to catch bigfoot on um video huh. and um I think this is a, yeah, this is in Louisiana. He was the first one to catch a clear picture of Bigfoot, okay, on his cam. And every year, it's like a tr tradition, each of his family members will go out into the swamp looking for sightings of Bigfoot. Oh, is that the guy, is that the Bigfoot that's stripping um, bark from the tree? I have no idea. I, I just know, I just seen the episode like on Swamp. This is like last year, I think. And I didn't even know about this. And I, I think it was maybe season two or season three, I think, that they go over this. And that's all they did on this for this family. Instead of them going to do uh, gator hunting, right. they just do one night. They'll just go out in the woods, and they'll look for evidence of Bigfoot. Well, it's funny because I posted um, just, like, locally here. It's just that Lemonster State Forest, and it's not a, a huge area, but all my friends are back home or like, Wow, that is that is some forest, and it goes on for miles and miles and miles. And the Bigfoot believers were like, "There's no way that if something wanted to hide in there, you'd ever be able to find it." And that's just in Massachusetts. I can only yeah. imagine what it's like down in the Smoky Mountains or the Pacific Northwest. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a mystery to me. Well, the thing what gets me is that in East Tennessee, they have the Bigfoot, and they also have the uh, creature called the Devil Monkey, which I, it, that's one of the ones that I went over last time. But where I'm at, towards West, and um, it's actually Middle Tennessee, but we're considered West Tennessee, even though we're in the middle. But anyways, um, you don't really hear anything. And it's so, and it's, it's amazing because we have a lot of woods. Like where we live at right now, we live on 16 acres now. And there's a lot of things that go on even on this property. Things that were dormant here that no one ever talked about having experience, we're having experiences now, you know. Um, not about Bigfoot, but just paranormal. But, you know, there's other things that go on here that you would think that people would be talking about because we do have a lot of woods. We do have a lot of things going on. We're not too far from Alabama and Mississippi. We're like where we live at right now. We're like on the border of Alabama and of Mississippi. And in between there and everything, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on that nobody really talks about. And that's amazing because, you know, like I said before, you go online, everybody's got an experience from Texas, Oklahoma, out west, like towards Oregon and Washington State, Alaska, even all the way out to Maine and everything going on east coast. But you hardly find anything out really in Tennessee. But you do above us, which is in Kentucky. You do below us, Mississippi, you know, Alabama, Georgia, even down Louisiana and everything. Even Arkansas, I think. Oh, Arkansas I think is Texas, crazy. Oh, yeah. But they don't ever talk about it here in Tennessee. And that's why it annoys me because I'm still trying to figure out why do we have a skinwalker here in Tennessee when skinwalkers are out in West Tennessee with the Navajo, there has to be a reason why. And nobody, I cannot find anything else. I tried uh, looking up the creature. I tried to call people, tribal members here in Tennessee, and I always get hung up on this one lady's like, "Don't talk about it. Get rid of the picture. Get rid of it." You know, that they lady, don't want to talk about it. Her. No, they don't. I talked to a lady that was uh, uh, part of the Cherokee tribe, trying to talk to somebody to see what I could find out. And when I told her about what we had she's like get rid of it get it off your phone forget about it don't mention it don't talk about it don't even look for it and she hung up on me she was freaking out and 
you know, I've had um, people look at the picture, and it moved on its own. I don't have the picture anymore. I finally got rid of it, especially after we had our son. Um, so what I have of it is what you see, like, online, and that's it. Um, but the picture will move on itself. I had two or three technicians that work with iPhone trying to debunk why the picture moved. It never, they never figured it out. They said, you don't have anything on here to make it move. There's no reason for it to move like that. Because the way it was moving, it was like a psychedelic type image. It would just move in all crazy ways. And they tried to get it to stop. They tried to get it to figure out what was going on. They could not. And anybody that saw that picture got really bad migraines, got sick. Just, you know, they started, you could see like goosebumps on their skin. And I finally, I'm glad I got rid of it because, um, like I said, with us having a son, I just don't want him exposed to that just yet. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, even the guy that I interviewed, um, Troy Hudson, who is, um, I told you before, he's um, very involved with the Choctaw and the Cherokee. He, when I interviewed him, he didn't want to talk about the Skinwalker or anything demonic. He just wanted to talk about Bigfoot because he believes that Bigfoot is benevolent. He, he believes yeah. that Bigfoot isn't really a threat. No, I, I had to disagree. I had to disagree with him on that. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't test it. Um, I put it like this way: I believe that when you get into a territory, like where there's uh, babies nearby, like bears, or if there's like an alpha male, you know, yeah, they get territorial, especially probably around when they're young, is starting to move around. Um, well, well, especially with, hunt, with, with hunters. I mean, if you've got a gun, they're going to get testy. I think. Well, there's a uh, case that happened. It, you know, they they went over this in Paranormal Witness, and I looked it up on my own. But I really recommend Paranormal Witness because a lot of their cases, you can look it up. And they go into so much details about what happened and stuff like that. And I don't know if you ever like the show A Haunting or Paranormal Witness or anything, but a Paranormal Witness, I believe, is a lot better than A Haunting. But anyways, hmm. um, one man, he just got out of the Marine Corps. He went to uh, work with the um, wildlife, and one of his jobs was to go out into the woods and get, you know, survey the land and everything, you know, make sure everything's okay, you know, just go out. And had Bigfoot chase him down to his vehicle. At one point, he thought that Bigfoot was going to kill him. And he was a Marine. And Marines are taught not to run away from a fight, you know, because when I was younger, I was trying to get into the military, and I was trying to go either Army or Marine Corps, and they taught us from the get-go in the Marine Corps, you don't run away from your enemy. You stand and fight. This guy ran like hell was chasing him. Huh. Well, I, I was speaking to Dave Wilbanks, and he runs the um, Bigfoot and More channel on YouTube. Awesome guy. And he's um, he, he solo camps in the middle of the Kamechi Mountains. And... He, he's going up there to find evidence and he's by himself in the dark listening for signs and stuff. I'm like, Dave, and he doesn't use a tent. I think he just camps out like right on the ground. And I'm like, Dave, what what if you see something like eight foot tall watching you from the, the tree line? What do you do? And he's like, well, I'll be scared as shit. I'm like, well, there's my point. <laughs> there's my point. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, what do you want to do? You know, I would think that if you go out there by yourself, I don't recommend that. I really don't. I mean, I used to go tracking out in the woods and stuff like that. And even I took risks, you know, going out there by myself because you never knew what was out there, especially like on the uh, witch trails. The woods that was across from my parents' house connected with the witch trails. So I only went so far out unless I was with my sister. And, um, but I would also think that if you're not carrying a weapon or anything like that, um, you're probably not seen as a threat. So I, I probably, that might bite, that might be, um, a theory, but I don't want to put theories to, um, test, you know what I mean? If I go out in the woods, I'm going to bring more than two people. I want a group because something happens, one of somebody is going to be able to get loose and get out and get help, you know? Even with two people, you're really not, um, you know, it's not really a smart thing to do. But that's my opinion, you know. 
um, it's 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 amazing what people will do by themselves, and they don't realize that they're putting themselves in so much danger. But did you say Woolbanks? Yeah, Dave Woolbanks. He was on the um, oh, he was on a travel channel and stuff. He's a good friend of mine, and he's um, down there in southeast Oklahoma. Smart guy, and uh, but he does not believe that these things are aggressive, and if you don't if you don't show aggression, they're not going to harm you. And you know, I respect his opinion. And he's going to be listening to this, and he is, he has a whole like he just released his whole camping trip in a four um, series show, um, and he heard some stuff. He heard tree knocks and some movement, and he's out there by himself. And I'm like, Dave, Jesus Christ, you've got bigger kahunis than I do because. <laughs> I, I well, could... I, I think I know why now, because my maiden name is Woolbank, so... Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, our ancestors, the Woolbank's ancestors, from what I understand, my sister did a background check and stuff like that. We actually start fights and wars and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of interesting, because when you said Woolbanks, I'm like, okay, I can see why you probably went by yourself then. <laughs> is, is, <laughs> Joking, that, is, is that English? Um... I want to say that the Woolbank's name is English, but from my understanding, our family on my dad's side is Scotch Irish, and um, the for supposedly I don't know how true the story is. I wasn't there. I can't tell if it was true or not. But supposedly, um, the King of England heard that Ireland was uh, starting to revolt, and they sent our ancestors out there to Ireland to either stop a the revolt or something. And huh. it's kind of funny because. Um, I, I again, I don't know how true this is. It, I don't, it was just passed on to us, kind of thing. And uh, we went, our family, our ancestors went out there to supposed to calm of a fight, and ended up started a war. So it was like that probably is true because my family they they're very rowdy. <laughs> huh. We're a rowdy bunch. <laughs> Same with the Hanradys, and and um, my my last name is Hanradi. I'm back in um. Hanradi means unlawful in Ireland. But, yeah, maybe that's why it is. Um, Dave, um, if you're listening <laughs> to this, th there you go. That's why you're so ballsy. <laughs> he's, Figured, a good, um, he's a good guy. Go ahead. Yeah, um, but the only reason I say don't go out there by yourself, unless you're trained, unless you know what you're doing and stuff like that, don't put yourself in harm's way kind of thing. If you go out there, it's better to work in a group because at least somebody can get help and not just you know you're not by yourself because it's also a security it's also a health issue because if something was to happen nobody would know what happened and then they'll be looking for you and they'll end up looking for a body so that's the only reason i say go with a small group if you can't go with one other person try to like keep tabs or something that way people know where you're at i think on the phones they have gps where if yeah. you go missing you know they can ping you but you know, if you have health issues or something, you want to make sure you have another person with you. Even when I go on a paranormal investigation, um, I normally do walks through the house or outside, and I'll have my husband with me because, one, he uh, he's trained with the military, you know, for medic and stuff like that. So if my sugar, like I'm a diabetic, if something was to go wrong, he knows what to do. He knows what needs to be done, you know. Hmm. And... um you know, I'll never go on an investigation by myself. Um, I'll have somebody with me, but um, more likely my husband. My husband and I, we work as a team. He's there not just for me, but he's also there to debunk. Like, if I feel or see something, you know, he's going to try to debunk what I see. Not because he doesn't believe me, but because he's already witnessed half the stuff um, and that Scully. I talked to you about. Yeah. Um, when I was on the road with him, he was a trucker. Things that happened with me on the road with him did not happen to him when he was by himself. But things would happen in the truck when I was there with him. Um, we had things that came up missing, then reappeared. We had things that were moved when they were, shouldn't have been moved. Um, electronics seemed to mess up around me. When we go on investigations, um, I actually have to leave the room in order for them to do an EVP sec sec uh, session or get their electronics to work because it will not work. And when I'm talking, um, they'll have like the, um, EV, not EVP, but the, um, 
I had it on my brain. I can't think of it. Um, it lights up like if you're talking. Um, um, EM, EMF, EMF readers. Right. Um, when I was doing it, somebody, uh, when they first came to our house to have a paranormal investigators, um, went to our house and stuff like that. Um, I told the late, this one girl, her grandmother's with her. I went to full details. She got other members in her team to let me read them because they, they didn't believe her and she wanted to prove. And they had the EMF readers around me. And when I started doing the reading, it was lighting up. I mean, it was going high. It was like you could hear the noise and everything else. And at one point, I was in the room by myself because they wanted to see what would happen. The cameras were moving by themselves. Huh. So these shows on, um, like, Discovery and that that kind of stuff, um, what do you call those shows? Um, uh, God, I can't remember the name like of them. Final Destination or... No. Um, Hunting Bigfoot? No, all, all those um, investigation shows, that, paranormal investigation shows that went out there and um, got some, like, EVP readings and stuff and... I think it was on the History Channel or the Discovery Channel. Are they all BS? Because they never find anything. See, that's what gets me, okay? <clears throat> I have, like I said, I have my EVP. When I go through it and stuff like that, you know, I'll um, show you some of the readings that we got off our EVP. Um, I believe that a lot of the ghost channels that you see, some of them have real activity, but a lot of them are... Um, for drama, you know. Right. Um, I, I like, for instance, there's a there's one on Discovery Channel. It's called Final Final Destination. Or, yeah, Final Destination. No, I'm sorry. Destination Truth. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of two shows in one. I'm so sorry. Destination yeah, the, Truth. The movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That movie messed me up. I will not get behind a log truck too close. I'm just saying. Yeah, um, that was a great no. scene. No, <laughs> when when that whole um, car crash happened, that was. That was one of the best scenes I've ever seen. Yeah. That was in part two, I think. The first one on, um, yeah, Destination. Uh, De now I'm saying the actual show, Final Destination 2. Um, I actually keep like a 18-wheeler between me and a log truck. Yeah. Because if I see anything loose, I'm putting my brakes. I'm pulling off to the side, you know. But uh, Destination Truth, um, I do like that one. Ghost Adventures. That's um, the one I'm thinking about. Yeah. There is one with Zach Baggins. I, I don't care for the guy because every time he goes on investigation, he's always getting possessed. And I don't think demons would like him too much, you know, because he's always getting possessed. And I'm like, that's not how that works. You know, that doesn't work like that, you know. Is that the good, um, is that the good looking, like, like muscular guy? I don't know. I mean, I haven't watched a show in forever. He... He looks like the guy from Paranormal State, but they're two different people, but they almost look um, to, uh, alike. And, um, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but there's one show, Ghost Hunters, that um, I do like their thought process. I don't like some of the things that they do. Um, and I, I respect what they do because they're trying to debunk everything to the T. But in my opinion, you can't debunk everything to the T. There's, you know, there's always something that science cannot prove. Um, we just uh, watched a TV show called Stranger Things or something. I think oh, that's called. I love that show. I, I, I don't because, no? and this is why. No, I just cannot get into that show, and this is why. There's this one scene where this guy has snow in the backyard, and, it, and you know, you can see the snowballs, like, rolling up. And here's a woman trying to explain this scientifically, no, I'm, I'm talking about like, I'm talking about the TV like drama, Stranger Things. Oh no, I'm talking about the actual. There's a TV show, and then what they do is they take what they see on like YouTube or something, right? Or people were shown in, and I, I probably said this show wrong. I have to look it up, but I thought it was Stranger Things. But anyways, um, and they take these videos and they're trying to debunk them. They're trying to use scientific science, you know, like science process of debunking these videos and stuff. And the one lady uses ice cream to show how it's supposed to work. I'm like, um, okay, I, that's kind of silly, but okay. So after that show, I just didn't care too much about it. Um, EVPs, I have seen them. I have listened to them. 
They are legit on TV shows. I give it 50-50. I don't believe everything that happens on those shows, not because I'm trying to be mean or I'm not trying to put anybody down. It's just I'm not there. I'm not able to see their evidence. I'm only seeing what they're showing. I was not in that um, in that area. So I give it 50-50. Um, I believe that the best way of finding evidence is actually going out there yourself and looking it at, you know, for yourself, you know. Hmm. Like you do. Well, I mean, like, like the house, well, not the house, but the um, cemetery that we went to out in, um, uh, on the outskirts of Jackson, Tennessee, it's called the Palestine Church. You know, we were doing an EVP session there. We didn't get a lot on our EVP. We got other things that were going on around us, but it was not caught on EVP. We had uh, pebbles being thrown at the building. You could hear footsteps. You can hear, you can, you know, you can feel and you know, you can even taste in there that there was something off putting, but none of that was registered on the EVP, you know. So, to me, just being there for yourself, you can see for yourself and you can, you know, you can debunk it or you can't debunk it. Hmm. I like the EMF readers because um, if you go to areas that have no power, no electrical power, and then the EMF goes off. That's not possible. Not unless there's something there that's giving us energy and there's nothing there. You know? Yeah, that happened um, on my first time ever podcast that we had cell phones and he told me to turn my cell phone off. And um, my first ever podcast and, and we turned the cell phones off and we, were, and we were in the middle of a 100 foot tunnel and we were still getting readings. Yeah. Um, we went to a house that its whole entire power was turned off. There was no power going to the house. And I'm not going to say where because um, I really did embarrass that guy. But he earned it. That's my defense. I'm sticking with it. Um, he was handing out these cards that, for psychic readings and whatnot. Um, I don't approve of psychic readings because, you know, if you have a gift, your gift is to help somebody. You know, your gift is not to make money off of, you know. And... I took my husband's cards that the guy gave him, and I took my cards. I was going to throw them away when we get home, you know. And he said, I'm hard to read. Nobody really can read me when they're, you know, those that have gift. And uh, he's like, you could try, but you're not going to get anywhere. I got this wall. Fifteen minutes later, the guy hid himself in the vehicle, walked himself in the vehicle, would not come around me. And I was just going straight details. And... um my husband, you know, he was biting his tongue, I guess you could say, because he didn't start laughing until we got we were home. Because the guy, you know, he was just saying that, you know, nobody could read him or anything like that. And within 15 minutes, you know, just seeing him walk himself in the vehicle, I'm like, really? <laughs> you know? Huh. But, you know, um, I don't do that to be mean. You know, I just don't like people that are arrogant. I don't like people when they, you know... We're there for the same cause. That is to find evidence to show the world that these things do exist. And when people come out there and they they show there are, you know, I guess um, you would probably say arse, but um, when yes. people go out there and they're they're showing their butt or whatever, it's like game on, challenge accepted, you know. And and the thing is, is that what I was reading him, it, it doesn't take a genius. I mean. Even working at the prison, you know, I had inmates that hated me around them because they couldn't BS me. They said, you know, I would figure out what they were doing within seconds, and I told them exactly what they did in details and stuff like that. Um, I had one guy, you know, that was giving me a hard time. He was uh, being a real jerk. You know, inmates, you're not, they're not in there for stealing Girl Scout cookies. They're in there for a crime. And he was just being a complete turd, and I told him, I said, your grandmother would be so ashamed of you right now. And I said, she taught you better than this. She wanted more from you, and you would not listen to her. The guy was crying. The guy was not a little guy. This guy was a pretty big guy. He was like maybe six foot two, six foot three. And I kept telling him exactly what his grandmother was saying. He apologized to me, and he walked away. And the guy was in full-blown tears. I mean, he had to hide in his cell to get himself composed. Because in a prison, you know, you can't show tears. You can't show emotions. Right. And after that, I didn't have any other problems from inmates from that pod for a while because um, 
they call me a witch or something. <laughs> and I'm not, you know, I'm just, you know, I just want to do my job, you know, at that time. So, you know what's really weird? I'm sitting here looking at my keyboard and it's gone 3D. I mean, it's, um, the numbers are jumping out at me. Maybe it's the effect uh -huh. you're having on me. But, <clears throat> excuse me, a question I wanted to ask you is, so you believe in Bigfoot? Do I? Yeah. Yes. What do you think it is? And, and I know that the Bigfoot um, Sasquatch Chronicles ask this all the time, but it's a really good question. But I'd like to ask my guests, if they do believe, believe in Bigfoot, what is their opinion on it? I believe that there's two possibilities. I believe that um, they, um, how do I say this? I believe that they are um, possessed, you know, um, people that maybe, I think the one theory is that people that go out hunting and they don't respect what they're killing, they don't respect their um, nature, then they become possessed where they walk the land as a Bigfoot and until they die or until they find somebody else that's doing what they were doing and they switch it up. Another possibility is that, um, you know, you hear about the flood uh, with Noah where they um, killed everything on Earth. Um, I believe that Bigfoot came after that. Um, I think the story was Nephilim's where they, um, the devils were breeding with females that were human form. No, angels. And, huh? Angels were breeding with humans. Well, they're fallen angels. So in a sense, they were demonic. Okay. Fallen angels. Yeah. I call them demons because literally that's what they are, you know, but fallen angels, I guess uh, most people would call them also. But um, that's a possibility. Um, but if that's the case, that would happen before the flood. So I don't know. If that's just a theory. My theory is that it was with the first one. I believe that there are people that have been cursed because they didn't respect the land around them. Because if you notice, a lot of Bigfoot attacks or um, when they are around happens around not too far from Nate where people go hunting. In most cases, not all cases, but in most cases. Yeah, there's so many different um, theories. Um, Troy, that I... Um He's actual, you know, uh, I told you he has, um, like, like big ties to the Choctaw and the um, Cherokee. And he said that if you are going to go out hunting, you know, leave some for the Bigfoot and take some for yourself. That's his, yeah. that's one of his um, solutions to, um, if you're on your property, to, um stop them harassing you um i think that they're some kind of hominid um oh, excuse me i think there's some kind of hominid um that science and the government won't um acknowledge for whatever reason that's just my personal opinion though well there's a lot going around like i know people with area 51 is the biggest thing like with ufos and everything like, for instance, you know, um, Area 51, I think, is, like, where they're creating weapons and stuff like that. For sure. Now, but I will say this. Um, going off the subject of Bigfoot, but still within the same, um, I guess they would call it conspiracy theories, which, you know, in conspiracy theories, it's normally uh, with people that are really going out there. But there's some cases some um, that have happened that I don't believe they fall in the range of conspiracy theories. Um, supposedly, the Navy... Back in, I want to say the 1940s, give or take, um, they actually had a ship, a naval ship. They were able to disappear and reappear. So do I think the military or, you know, the government have things that they don't talk about? Yeah. A lot of our electronics that we have today is because of studies that the military has done, the, you know, with the government and everything. Right. Well, the internet. Cell phones. The internet, for yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you really want to be technical, they first started with like these major mega computers. And now we have computers. We have computers on our phones. Uh, conspiracy theorists believe that they use the phones and TVs to find us and track us and everything. Is it far-fetched? No. Is it possible? Yes. Um, 
I just depends how much you really want to stress out about it. I say if the TV, if they got a camera to watch me, just moon them and go on about your business, you know, give them something they don't want to see. That way they don't follow you, you know, <laughs> but that's just me being goofy too. Well, as long as but, the, um, as long as the technology doesn't fall under the, the hands of the, um, the people that don't support the government, then we're all set. Well, that's the sad thing is because it already has, you know, um, getting into this conspiracy theory, and I apologize, but a lot of it, you know, has happened. Um, they Technology has gotten into the wrong hands. Look at Pearl Harbor. I mean, they didn't even have a lot of technology that we have today, yet they used technology against our people. And this was in Hawaii. This was during, this was right before World War II, you know. What do you mean? Um they were using uh, technology to coordinate the attacks on Pearl Harbor. Look at 9-11. They used uh, technology for, for 9-11. You know, these attacks by terrorists, they already used. See, my dad, I can't go into too much details on what my dad did but um, in the military. Just know that what he did, um, he did for the government. But anyways, um, he said that even on the telephones, even on the radios, a certain song, a certain phrase, and they'll use it to coordinate with each other, then they have their strike. It's not always them talking on the phone. It's just they'll use certain songs. They'll look in the newspaper. They'll look online for certain things and stuff like that, you know, just to coordinate. So um, I believe technology has and have been in the wrong hands for a very long time. It's just the average person doesn't see it because how many people that, you know, are not military brats, are not part of the military, are not part of the government, think about these things on a daily basis unless they really, really are paranoid. Hmm. I really want to get political, but I'm not going to. <laughs> because <laughs> you, and, right. you and I have spoke about this stuff on Facebook, and I really don't want to get into it because... This is a Bigfoot podcast, and um, um, we can we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll probably have to keep it to the, um, the, the our Facebook feed. But you know what I'm saying. But oh yeah, um, yeah, I like to keep it lighthearted because I'll probably get pulled <laughs> off YouTube if I if I start um, saying what I really believe. But you know, it was th thanks for coming off for part two. It's been what. 80 minutes and um I, oh, well. <laughs> I, I, I could talk for hours i could I, I could like get so into this stuff but you know some people they're they're very um they're very um fragile and they they get offended very easily so i'm, I'm not going to say any more about it I'm, I'm gonna, oh yeah i understand <laughs> i'm going to keep i'm going to keep it on bigfoot i'm not going to talk about um planned parenthood or any of this kind of crap because <laughs> yeah <laughs> trust me i understand 100 percent. you know like i said i run a group and i just posted one picture as a joke not about political parties it was just the comment i'm at the the picture i'm not going to say what it was who it was against it was going to keep it neutral um it was just making fun of this person because they kind of look like beetlejuice that's the only reason i posted that picture was because of that post right there. Wasn't trying to get political or anything like that. And it's so hard because on my group I have so many Christians, Wiccans, witches, um, people from all types of background, you know, people that do believe, that don't believe. And it's like walking a fine line because there are things I really want to say. It's not that I want to offend anybody. It's just I know what's going to happen. It's going to be all kinds of drama, all kinds of, name calling i've seen it before on paranormal groups i'm not going to have it you know and with the paranormal world with the cryptozoology world you know we want to keep focus on those subjects but sometimes yes. it's so hard because you do have a lot of things going on that the military and the government hides well, well you know are, are, are you yeah. on parlor yet um rose do what are you on parlor yet Parler, P A R L E R. Yeah, I know. Um, no, I don't think so. I'm just. I'm trying to think over here. Well, you caught me off guard on that. 
No, you, you should <laughs> sign up for it. it. It's um like Twitter only. You can say what you want, basically. Oh, I should try that because I'm getting in trouble a lot. I'm expecting to be put in Facebook jail any day now. Yeah, because well, of the stuff that I've been posting. <laughs> sign up for Potter and look for Celtic Trigger. Okay, Celtic Trigger. I'm on there. Our- and, and lots of people that got banned from Twitter are on there saying what they want. You know. Oh, that's that's good. Yeah. And it's an app. And I'll look it up. Give me a second. I'm gonna put you on speaker for a second. I will say this, my son's being really good right now. He hasn't even made a sound. Well, that's good. Little grandma's yeah, quiet. Like, yeah, he he hates it when I, I'm on the phone. If I get on the phone even to play a game, it it sets him off. He wants mama's attention and mama's attention only. Yeah, that's my, my six-year-old is still like that. I don't mind it because he's, he's only going to be little for so long. I know, and cherish every day because, you know, when you're older, when they're older, that that little baby's gone. You've lost that little yeah. baby. You've you just got to, that's life, I guess. Okay, I got the Moxie Votary Wall. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. The Parlor, Unbiased Social Media. Yeah, I got it, and it's downloaded now. Yeah, so. So I'll be having fun later. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, it's so much fun. You can say what you want. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying like, like, you know, stuff that puts anybody down. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm saying you can, um, you know, talk about stuff and, you know, knock a band. Um, look for Celt- Celtic Trigger, Trigger, obviously with two G's, with a K, yeah, right. Celtic Trigger. And um, follow me. I swear to God, right. I, I joined this platform and I got like, like 30 people following me in like two days because everybody's just so happy to have some kind of a platform to share proper and um, honest news. It's really, really good. Well, the thing, it is, and it's not just the politics of it. I'm not going to go there because we already right. agreed that that's a, you know, an off-putting subject that we're not going to go there. But even in the paranormal and crypto you can't always say what you want to say because somebody's going to get offended by something. And, um, you know, I've already gotten kicked out of like two or three paranormal groups. Oh, me too. I've been kicked out of two foot, Bigfoot groups. Yeah, and it, it, it kills me because, you know, if, when I see people asking for help, you know, now that I'm a, a mama bear, I guess you could say, I want to help somebody. You know, that's why I got to the paranormal was to help people. And I had a lady that was having some issues, and she asked the group, what do, what do we see? And I was told I was reading the picture. No, I'm telling you what I see as I'm seeing it. I'm not reading the picture. I'm being shown things, and I'm just telling you what I see. And apparently that's considered reading. And to me, it's like, a lady is asking for help. She works here. She wants to know that she's not going nuts. And I told her, I said, this nursing home wasn't always a nursing home something else was here I'm, I'm assuming it was a hospital because i saw a baby in the shower you know so apparently she was near the nursery kind of thing and she said you're right you know nobody's ever said anything about that and that's what kills me because you go on these groups people are asking for help you can't help them but then you get people that make fun are skeptics and they're running amok I'm like, how is this fair? You know, you got somebody mocking the thing, and you got people that really want help. Well, the leader of the um, Massachusetts, like, Sasquatch group was driving home one day, and he saw a Sasquatch, like, crossing the road. And and he he backed up, and he pulled up, and he he started running into the woods after it, but he had flip-flops on. And no guy should uh-huh. no guy should wear flip flops. <laughs> we don't need, we don't need to see your feet. I mean, women can wear flip flops. That's fine, but guys shouldn't wear flip flops or shower shoes. I, I'm against that. Um, if I'm president, I will ban them. But I am. Um, <laughs> so he starts running after this this um, hairy beast that's eight feet tall, that's brown, 
and he realizes that he's running through um, poison ivy. Oh no! And he's a, I'm not allergic. I can I can walk through poison ivy, no problem. I'm I'm not allergic to anything. So he starts running through poison ivy, and he gets back to the truck, and he's like totally like freaking out, and he's making a Facebook live video, and he's his biggest concern is that he ran through poison ivy and he wants to know what to do and everybody's giving him advice and and he's like hyperventilating <laughs> and i'm like in in the, in this group you know and, and, and it's you know it's live so i'm like pictures or it didn't happen <laughs> so i was kidding you know i had a few beers in me so i was just kidding around yeah. and he sent me this big long message on messenger no no um apostrophes or periods or anything calling me a loser and a scumbag and that was it i was kicked out of the group and then an- oh, wow. a- another bigfoot group was um they were um one of these one of these um bigfoot groups that are don't shoot at them okay and they're, they're not scary and whatever so somebody was telling the story about they saw a bigfoot and it was like 10 feet away from them uh, and i said something like oh my god i would have crapped my pants if i had saw that i was banned just for saying that wow oh yeah about the grammar thing i'm horrible about that i'm not my best subject if it's a math equation or you're a math person uh, literature yeah, I'm a math person. I like math. I love biology. You, you Grammar said it, is my worst subject. <laughs> you said it before. I'm I'm an English person. I'll teach you. Don't worry. <laughs> Good luck. My teacher went to alcohol afterwards teaching me. <laughs> well, I, I'm already on alcohol, so um, I've got a head start. But I, I'll um I'll I'll correct you if you want me to. But no, grammar. One of my one of my best friends is an engineer, and his grammar is terrible. But he can he can set that aside and 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 he can like totally be. I've had podcasts with him, but when he wants to and he wants to make a political point or he wants to be eloquent, he can really really like show everybody up. You know. Yeah. You can learn. Not me. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, I, I just grammar was my best, uh, my worst subject. Um, if it was literature, I was, you know, I was reading books thicker than uh, my, you know, f- at the age of five, I was reading thick books like Miss Risby and the Rats and Nim and stuff like that when I was five years old. I've always been a reader and stuff like that. But grammar, no. <laughs> well, um, you can learn. Any. Uh, my brain's already fried after everything I've been through. <laughs> Not even lying. <laughs> I get you. But... But um, I know I do got to go check on the baby. I got to go get his food set up. All right. Like that, cause I hear you, Rose. About that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way. I appreciate you having me on here. No, it was fun. I enjoyed right, talking right? to you. Same here. Same here. <laughs> but you have a good evening, and thank you so much. Okay, Rose. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.